Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar. And this is the first course on Samasa. We begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari karti, bari bharti, sanjari harti, leelaya. Vishvesham satchidanandam, vandeham yokhilan jagat. Chari karti, bari bharti, sanjari harti, leelaya. We are studying the Tatpurusha Samasa which is one of the major type of samasas in Sanskrit. We have stated that there are four types of samasas in Sanskrit, Avyayi Bhava, Tatpurusha, Bahuvrihi and Dvandva in that order stated in the grammar of Panini. We also said that Tatpurusha samasa is explained in numerous sutras in comparison with the other samasas. We have already studied the number of sutras prescribing the Tatpurusha compound, prescribing the samasanta suffixes and also the swara or the accent. This number is far more than the other sutras prescribing the other compounds, other samasas. The derivation of the Tatpurusha compound is captured in the form of this simple equation. You have x plus y, where x and y are two different independent entities in terms of meaning as well as word form as well as an accent and they, the speaker things are to be merged together and then the speaker merges them together and forms one unit as far as one meaning is concerned, as far as the one word form is concerned and also as far as the one accent is concerned. So there is Ekarthi Bhava with the three features namely Aikarthya, Aikapadya and also Aikaswarya. As far as the Tatpurusha compound is concerned, this newly formed unit, which is XY, has Y acting as the head of the unit. So when this newly formed unit is to be linked with any other external member in the sentence, as we have already seen that, the output of the process of compounding is a nominal root or a pratipadika which is linked with other words in the sentence. So Y is the head and when XY as a unit is linked with another element in the sentence, it is through Y which is the head and never through X independently. There are some exceptions where X is related to some other meaning, some other word independently. Such compounds are treated as exceptions and are termed as a samartha samasa, which we have already studied before. So far, we have been studying the Vibhakti Tatpurusha, which is a very big umbrella within the Tatpurusha samasa. And now we have to study another equally important and big umbrella of samasas also known as karma dharaya, a very very important type of samasa within the tatpurusha samasa. 
in the vibhakti tatpurusha we studied dvitiya vibhakti tatpurusha tritiya vibhakti tatpurusha chaturthi vibhakti tatpurusha panchami vibhakti tatpurusha saptami vibhakti tatpurusha this is the order in which they are stated in the ashtadhyayi and then comes shashti vibhakti tatpurusha the dvitiya vibhakti tatpurusha is stated by the sutras beginning with dvitiya shritatit patitagatatyast prapta padnaihi tritiya tatpurusha is stated by the sutras beginning with tritiya tatkratarthena guna vachanena chaturthi vibhakti tatpurusha is stated by only one sutra chaturthi tadarthartha balihita sukharakshitaihi panchami is stated by a few sutras beginning with panchami bhayena saptami tatpurusha is stated by the sutras beginning with saptami shaundaihi and then shashti vibhakti tatpurusha is stated by the sutra shashti and we also noted that within the shashti tatpurusha samasa there is only one sutra prescribing the shashti samasa and rest all are the negations negating where all the shashti tatpurushas cannot take place that is something amazing when the, in the vibhakti tatpurushas we kept saying that the vibhakti tatpurusha highlights the fact that the vibhaktis are the base for the samasa the karaka theory is at the base of the samartha theory it is the sentence which is the input for the process of compounding and the output is the pratipadika which once again becomes an input as far as the sentence is concerned now amongst all these vibhaktis there is one vibhakti which is not mentioned anywhere in the grammar of panini which is the prathama vibhakti this is a puzzle as to why panini has not mentioned prathama vibhakti separately but that can be studied and solution can be found out when we study the karma dharaya compound the karma dharaya compound is stated in the ashtadhyayi in 21 from the sutras 2149 onwards up to 72 that is the final sutra of 21 so there are in all 23 sutras in which karma dharaya compound prescriptions are found first of all let us see what is karma dharaya how is it defined in the grammar of panini in fact there is a sutra 1242 which defines what is a karma dharaya it says tatpurushah samanadhikaranah karma dharayah tatpurushah samanadhikaranah karma dharayah what this means is that that tatpurusha in which the constituents denote one and the same entity as referent is termed karma dharaya obviously in the tatpurusha compound there are two words denoting two different entities but when they denote one and the same entity as referent they may be denoting two different meanings but referring to one and the same entity and then this type of tatpurusha whose feature is samanadhikarana is termed as karma dharaya so the feature of samanadhikarana also known as samanadhikaranya the state of being samanadhikarana is defined in the tradition in the following manner bhinna pravritti nimittasya anekasya shabdasya ekasmin arthe vrittihi samanadhikaranyam when different words having different pravritti nimittas when they refer to one and the same entity then the words are said to be in the relation of samanadhikaranya co referentiality 
let us study the sutras one by one. First we take up this sutra, Purva Kalaika Sarvajarat Purana Navakevalaha Samanadhi Karanena. Now this sutra has got the word Samanadhi Karanena, which continues from 2.149 up to the end of the Pada, that is 72, indicating the scope of this particular Karmadharaya Samasa prescription. Purva Kalaika Sarvajarat Purana Nava Kevalaha Samanadhi Karanena. There are two Padas in the Sutra. Purva Kala Eka Sarva Jarat Purana Nava Kevalaha. This is one Pada. And this has got these constituents. Purva Kala Eka Sarva Jarat Purana Nava and Kevala. Now this word appears in the Prathama Vivakti 1 slash 3, Prathama Bhuvachana. And this Prathama ensures that this, these words are termed Upasarjana in accordance with the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam. And then the Sutra Upasarjanam Purvam ensures that these words occupy the initial position of the compound the Purva Nipata. The word Samanadhi Karanena, which is an instrumental singular, means with the same referent. The words continued are Sup, Sahasupa, and also, of course, Samartha Padavidhi. So the overall meaning of the Sutra is the following. Any Subanta with elements Purvakala, etc., is compounded with any other interrelated Subanta whose referent is the same. I repeat, any Subanta with elements Purvakala, etc., as part of it, is compounded with any other interrelated Subanta whose referent is the same. So we have these elements now. Purva Kala first. Purva Kala refers to earlier time period referred to in relation to the later time period. For example, if the meaning is earlier bathed and later anointed, someone who bathed first and then he got anointed. Purvam Snataha Paschad Anuliptaha. This is the Laukika Vigraha. Snataha Anuliptaha. Now, Snataha and Anuliptaha, they both are referring to one and the same entity. The meaning is different, but the entity referred to is the same. And therefore, they share this relationship of Samanadhi Karanya. And now, they will have the Samasa. And since Nata refers to an action that has happened before, Purva Kala, therefore the word Nata occupies the initial position in the compound as it becomes Upasarjana because it is stated in the Prathama Vibhakti in this particular Sutra 2.149. Purva Kalaika Sarva Jarat Purana Navakevalaha Samanadhi Karanena. So now we have Snata plus Su plus Anulipta plus Su. This is the Alaukika Vigraha and the process of compounding starts here. The term Samasa applies over here. And once this is a Samasa, this becomes a Pratipadika by the Sutra Arthavad Adhatura Pratya Pratipadikam and Kritta Dhita Samasascha. And once it is a Pratipadika, the two supratyas, they are now part of the pratipadika. Therefore, supodhatu pratipadika yoho now applies and deletes both the supratyas. So we get snata plus anulipta as the next step. Then we join them together, do the savarna dirgha sandhi, which has scope of application, and we derive the final compound output, namely. Snatanu Lipta. 
somebody who earlier bathed and later got anointed, snatanu lipta. And we find several examples of this kind in the literature. Even in the other curricula, we find references of this kind of compound as a peculiar and separate kind of compound. Similarly, we have another example where we have these meanings, earlier ploughed and later leveled, purvam krishtam paschat samikritam. And then we get the compound krishta samikrata, also earlier burnt and later which overgrew, purvam dagdham paschat prarudham. In both these examples, Krishta and Samikrita mean something different, but they refer to one and the same entity. Similarly, Dagdha and Prarudha mean something different, but they refer to one and the same entity. So they are having a relation of Samanadhi Karanya co-referentiality, and that is why they get compounded as Krishta Samikrita and also Dagdha Prarudha. The previous examples, they are also stated to be the examples of Visheshana Ubhaya Pada Tatpurusha in some literature. Now we proceed to the next example of the word Eka. So now we have the meaning one Sari. So Eka Shati. Eka means one, Shati means Sari. Now the meanings are different, but both of them are referring to one and the same entity. So they have the relationship of co-referentiality, samanadhikaranya, so semantic relatedness is there. And now, because the word eka is mentioned in the Prathama Vibhakti in this particular sutra, by the sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam, the word eka will be termed Upasarjana, and Upasarjanam Purvam will ensure that the word Eka occupies the initial position in the compound. And so Shati will occupy the second position or the final position in the compound. So Eka will be Purvapada, Shati will be Uttarapada. And so we have Eka plus Su and Shati plus Su as Alaukika Vigraha. And then this becomes a Samasa and then this becomes a Pratipadika and of course then Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and then we have Eka plus zero plus Shati plus zero. Sups are deleted. Now in this case because Eka and Shati they are having co-referentiality relation therefore another Sutra which states Pumvad Bhava, which we have studied earlier, that applies. Striya Pumvat Bhashita Pumska Danum Samanadhikarane Striyam Apurani Priyadishu. 6334 applies and converts a ka back into its Pratipadika form, a ka. And so this Pumvad Bhava is taking place on a ka. Eka becomes Eka and then we get the finally derived compound output namely Eka Shati. So these are various operations taking place at different stages governed by different rules stated by Panini in his own grammar. And that is how from Eka Shati as the Laukika Vigraha we get the compound Eka Shati. This is the finally derived output. Similarly, if you have the meaning to be conveyed as one alms. So the Laukika Vigraha is Eka Bhiksha and then once again we have Eka plus Su and Bhiksha plus Su. Eka and Bhiksha are referring to one and the same entity. So there is Samanadhi Karanya but the word Eka is mentioned here and Eka is mentioned in the Sutra in Prathama Vibhakti. So it becomes Upasarjana and then it 
takes the initial position of the compound because of upasarjanam purvam. So we have now eka bhiksha and the alaukika vigraha is eka plus su plus bhiksha plus su. And then the su pratyaya is part of the pratipadika because eka plus su plus bhiksha plus su becomes samasa and then it becomes pratipadika. And so suppose hatu pratipadika yoho applies and both the su pratyayas get deleted. So we have eka and bhiksha. Eka plus zero plus bhiksha plus zero. At this stage, once again, we apply the pumvad bhava karya, which is a purva pada karya primarily. And because of this pumvad bhava, which says that eka, which is a word in feminine, is taken back to its pratipadika form, which means that the feminine suffix indicating the feminine gender is removed and the pratipadika form is retained. And so we have eka in the next step of derivation. And so we have eka plus zero plus bhiksha plus zero. And therefore we have eka bhiksha as the finally derived compound output. The pumat bhava takes place because of striya pumat bhashita pumska danung samanadhikarane striyam apurani priyadeshu 6334. Next we have the example where the word sarva occurs. The meaning to be conveyed is all gods. And so sarve devaha, this is the laukika vigraha. So we have sarva plus jas plus deva plus jas as the alaukika vigraha. And then because there is co-referentiality, the sutra urvakalaika applies. Sarva is stated there in the sutra in the prathama vibhakti. Therefore, it is termed upasarjana. And therefore, upasarjanam purvam ensures that it occupies the initial position of the compound. And so we have sarva plus chas plus deva plus chas. Then the term samasa applies. Then the term pratipadika applies. Then supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and deletes chas. So we have sarva plus zero plus deva plus zero. And then we get the finally derived form sarva deva. Similarly, all men is the meaning that is to be conveyed. And we have sarve manasyaha as the laukika vigraha. And then the finally derived compound output is sarva manasya. Following the same procedure of supodhatu pratipadika yoho. Now let us go to the next example, which is of the word jarat. Jarat means ailing, derived from the verbal root jru vayohanau. So an ailing elephant, jaran hasti. Both these words refer to the same entity. Therefore, they have a relation of co-referentiality. And therefore, the semantic relatedness exists. And so they get compounded by this particular sutra. So now we have Jarat plus Su plus Hasti plus Su as the Alaukika Vigraha. And then this becomes a Samasa. And then this becomes a Pratipadika. And then Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and Su gets deleted. So we have Jarat plus Hastin, and so we have Jarad Hastin, and Jarad Hastin is the finally derived output. And the Prathama Ekavachana would be Jarad Hasti. Then we have another meaning, namely an ailing logician, Jaran Nayaikaha. Both these refer to one and the same entity. So they have a relation of co-referentiality between them. And so this samasa takes place. There is semantic relatedness there. So we have jarat plus su and nayayika plus su as the alaukika vigraha. Now this becomes a samasa. 
and then it becomes a pratipadika and then supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and the su get gets deleted and so we have jarat plus zero plus nayaika plus zero and so we have jarat nayaika and then the is substituted by na by the sandhi rule and so we get the finally derived compound output in the form of jaran nayayika now the example of the word purana so puranam annam is the laukika vigraha meaning old food and we have purana plus su plus anna plus su as the alaukika vigraha and then there is samasa saudhnya and then there is pratipadika saudhnya and then supodhatu pratipadika yoha applies and both the suits get deleted so we have purana plus zero plus anna plus zero and so we get the form purana anna and then there is the scope of application of sabarna dirgha sandhi so we apply it and get the finally derived compound output in the form of purana anna Similarly, when the meaning old hermeneutician is to be conveyed, we have Puranaha Mimam Sakaha as the Laukika Vigraha and we do the same processing. Of course, there is the semantic relatedness in the form of co-referentiality and we derive the final compound output in the form of Purana Mimam Saka. Then we go to the word Nava. Navam Annam is the Laukika Vigraha, meaning fresh food. So we have the Alaukika Vigraha, Nava plus Su plus Anna plus Su. Then there is Samasa Saudhnya. Then there is Pratipadika Saudhnya. And so both the Su in the Pratipadika are deleted by Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho. And we get the finally derived compound output after having performed the Sandhi operation, Navanna. Similarly, when we have the meaning to be denoted new reciters, Navaha Pathakaha, as the Laukika Vigraha, we do the same processing and derive the final compound output in the form of Nava Pathaka. And then again with the word Kevala. So we have Kevalam Annam as the Laukika Vigraha, meaning alone food. And so we have Kevala plus Su plus Anna plus Su as the Alaukika Vigraha. And so there is Samasa Saudhnya, Pratipadika Saudhnya. And now we have two Su's which are part of a Pratipadika. So Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and both the Supratyas are deleted. So we have Kevala and Anna and we join them together and we get the word Kevala Anna as the finally derived compound output kevalanna similarly alone a grammarian if this is the meaning to be conveyed when there is co-referentiality between these two elements uh, and there is semantic relatedness so we apply the same process and we derive the compound output in the form of kevala vayyakarana to summarize the samanadhikarana aspect of the meaning is a core part of the formation or derivation of the karma dharaya compound. Two words whose meanings are different, yet their referent is one and the same, is this basic semantic condition. It is observed between a qualified and qualifier primarily, etc. The derivation of karma dharaya compound involves pungvad bhava, a very important operation on the purvapada, which means a feminine form going back to its root form that has a very important operation. We continue studying the Karma Dharaya Samasa in the next lecture. These are the texts that are referred to and thank you for your patience.